Checking in with Steve Kaplan. He is the West Bloomfield Township Supervisor. Steve, always great to have you on the show. How's it going? Hello, Ron. Everything's going well. You're doing fabulously at the Civic Center TV complex. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, once you get past a certain age, learning new skills can be a bit humbling, right? Yeah, but I thought you were about 32 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we love you, but we won't talk about age. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, Steve, uh, how's the, how are things going over there? I mean, there's so much going on. And, you know, one month, two months, three months into this, you think you have a handle on it. You're looking towards the finish line, and here we are six months in. Is it just becoming the new normal now? It is. Six months and one day have passed since the governor issued the executive order declaring an emergency. And Rhonda, for many of us, perhaps you too, it's difficult to remember life before, before the coronavirus. I, I never want to forget life prior to COVID-19 because I miss people. I miss seeing people smile. I miss their reactions. Uh, although some of the masks have gotten pretty creative by now. So that is, I guess, a good thing, right? Yes, yes, very much so. So we, a committee was formed, which included our fire chief and police chief and several staff members and board members. And we think that we are providing maximum protection to staff visitors, contractors, anyone visiting town hall. We have the plexiglass, six foot social distancing. Everybody has to wear a mask. We have soap available or sanitizing fluid for people to wash their hands. And you'll be pleased to know that at most, we've had one person at town hall consisting of 91 employees who tested positive. And that person recovered, everybody else was tested and nobody contracted the virus. So we're pleased because we, like everybody else, want to promote health. We want our staff, we want our residents to be as healthy and safe as possible. It's, it's, it's good to hear that everyone is staying safe and healthy over there. It, Steve, I will say one of the things I've enjoyed coming out of this, I know Zoom meetings can be difficult to navigate, especially on a larger platform, but as a regular person, it's been nice to not have to actually go to City Hall or to plan something into your schedule. You can just kind of dip in and dip out of some of these meetings. Do you think that's gonna stick around post pandemic? I, I do, and you know, my prior career as a trial lawyer, attorneys would be required to appear in court for even a pre-trial or even to adjourn a case. Now, many judges are presenting over proceedings by way of Zoom and attorneys are working from their offices. I think that will continue even when this, when this virus is vanquished. I think you're gonna find that pre-trials and even some hearings will be conducted without the attorneys being required to appear in court. And that's gonna hurt the clothing manufacturers because the attorneys don't have to dress up in suits the way they did. Of course, they should have a shirt and tie. I will say I haven't been to the dry cleaner in quite some time. I know, I heard about that, and he's considering or going out of business not having your business. <laughs> well, we had a hefty uh, dry cleaning bill, I will oh, yeah. say that. Uh, I, it will be interesting, I think, especially in the courts, to see how they continue this, even more so on the federal court level, in which they don't allow cameras in the courtroom. So that will be an interesting uh, thing to see what develops post-COVID-19. Let's hope there is a post COVID-19. I know you guys have a big event coming up, the Household Hazardous Waste event. Fill us in on when that is and what it is. And I know it's extremely popular and probably even more so this year because people have been cleaning out their, their garages and their basements. 20 years ago in 2001, West Bloomfield Township hosted its first Household Hazardous Waste Day. For 20 consecutive years, we have presided over this event. It's a wonderful event, Rhonda. It's really a testament to our residents because we have approximately 1,400 visitors to town hall during a Saturday HHW event. And our residents do care. They want green, they want a safe community. They don't want landfills filled with all kinds of hazardous waste. Think about it, Rhonda, that a typical resident might wait in line for 20 minutes and then another 15 minutes before he or she leaves the premises after depositing the 
batteries and paint and other household hazardous matters. That's a commitment, 35 to 40 minutes, but they do it because they care about our community. And I think that's one of the draws of West Bloomfield Township that we're environmentally sensitive and we have 28 lakes and maybe 500 ponds and thousands of trees. So the Household Hazardous Waste Day is scheduled for this Friday, one to seven, and this Saturday, the 26th of September from nine to two. Now, normally we only have this on Saturday, but because we had to cancel the event in May, Rhonda, we scheduled two days, Friday and Saturday. Steve Kaplan joining us. He is the supervisor of West Bloomfield Township with us today on the Oakland County Megacast. So with this event going on, it is an outdoor event, but it is something that requires a fair amount of interaction between the public and the vendors on site. How will this year's household hazardous waste event be different from those in the past, uh, making, making up, of course, for COVID-19 being a, a key factor? Good question, Tyler. And I think the typical resident will not notice any difference because even in our prior 19 years, the homeowner remained in the car and volunteers would remove the paint from the truck or the TV from the back seat or for shredding purposes, Tyler, the, the motorists would drive over to the shredding area and the boxes would be removed by the volunteers. So that part won't be different. What will, what will vary, Tyler, and I know you've probably attended some of these, all of our staff will be wearing masks. And by the way, we'll have 30 people working at this event from town hall, essentially volunteers. But then there's a company called US Ecology and they, they staff the event. There might be 20 paid staff for the day through US Ecology that provides the services. So you will see all of us wearing masks. We'll probably stay, uh, we, not probably, we will remain more than six feet from you. If you're driving a car, we'll be back away from you. But beyond that, it'll be the every day or every year household hazardous waste event. For those that may be wanting to clear out some things for the first time, what are some things that are on the don't bring list? Good question. Let me tell you what is available. And that would be, of course, any, any electronic device, any, any hazardous waste, including paint thinner, paint, oil, all batteries, medication, you want to dispose of medication, we'll take that. It might be sty like styrofoam, I don't think we accept. So you're not going to take our big screen TV from the 1980s? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, no, we, we do take those. Oh, you do and... take electronics. It, no, first, I, I would sorry, have to, I... it'd be hard to actually haul it there, though. Yeah, yeah, maybe I wasn't very articulate. But yes, we radios, televisions, large screens, anything, hi fi's. That's an old term. <laughs> Maybe some uh, eight-track uh, tape decks or, you know, yes. cassette tape players, VHS players. Right. And, oh, and we'll all be wearing the same uniform. It'll be a nice uh, HHW T-shirt or polo shirt. But this is, this is a very important community event, Tyler and Rhonda, because our, our residents, as I mentioned, will have 1,400 vehicles here at a minimum on Friday and Saturday. And they look forward to the event. And I think it also is an opportunity for a community to display normality or normalcy. This is something that has occurred every year on the clock. And now, again, we're having it. And I know our residents were disappointed when we canceled the event in late May. But at that point, we weren't as sophisticated as a community in terms of keeping people safe. But we realize that this is an event we can hold without jeopardizing anybody's safety. West Bloomfield Township Supervisor Stephen Kaplan with us on the Oakland County Megacast. For those that are tuning in on, on WBFH out of Bloomfield Hills, online, uh, on our website, or on Facebook throughout the local area, what, who is this event open to in terms of pe residents of which, town, which townships and cities? And, uh, and what should people expect in terms of traffic? How is the best way, what is the best way for people to enter the town hall complex for this event this week? We have entered into an agreement with Orchard Lake, City of Orchard Lake Village. So all Orchard Lake residents are, will participate or they can participate. And of course, all West Bloomfield residents. Steve Kaplan with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. So, it's a great event, uh, it, but people should probably be a little bit patient, patient because I would imagine lines are going to be 
long as I know that we cleaned out our basement, we cleaned out our garage because everyone's been quarantined. So maybe there's going to be additional people with additional products. So just be patient if you get stuck in line as well, right? Yes, and I omitted to mention that as usual, as always, we'll have a truck from a charity. Sometimes it's Salvation Army. This year it's St. Vincent de Paul Church. So anybody who wants to donate clothing or anything of value, that, that would be a good opportunity. And I think it's important to mention that we provide services for this event or yeah, to our shut-ins, individuals who are disabled, unable, maybe you have an 86-year-old man or woman who doesn't drive any longer. So on the Friday, Friday, September 25th, we will be traveling to their homes to pick up the items they want to dispose of because the township board believes that people should not be precluded from participating simply because of a physical malady or inability to drive. That's great to know also about the donations because, uh, as I said, so many people have been cleaning out their closets and this, that, and the other during the COVID-19 shutdown. So they have a lot of things that need to be donated. Give us a rundown. What else is going on over there in the fine city of West Bloomfield? Well, you know, the library is reopened and not all libraries are open in the Oakland County area. All of them provide curbside services, but our library, a, Residents can visit for up to 45 minutes and read newspapers. The Parks Commission, of course, is always flowing with wonderful activities. That is just a great organization led by Jennifer Tucker. But here at Town Hall, you know, we're conducting business. So tax day is here today, and so we're, we have a line outside the treasurer's office. But I think you'll find that we are efficient, and the staff members we have nearly universally are positive, they have good attitudes, they're friendly, and I think that makes a difference. When you call a municipality and somebody is friendly and says, thank you for calling, or when you visit here and you need a permit or you need a, you have a question about an inspection, that you will be interacting with a friendly employee because that's essential, that's what the board wants. We want people with good attitudes who care and actually like people. Steve Kaplan with us. He's the West Bloomfield Township Supervisor joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. Steve, uh, tonight's Township Board meeting, the board will be on, will be recognizing both its election workers and the polling locations for their service to the township. How much more, how much more of an impact of importance are those partnerships in this time during COVID-19, during the pandemic, in terms of helping the township run a smooth and, and proper election? Well, the clerk's office does a phenomenal job there. The people who work at the clerk's office just are superb and they're well-trained and they care and they're educated. They can answer any question you have. But as you said, the, the buildings, the governmental agencies that allow us to use their, their buildings for voting purposes, and then all the individuals who work the election at pretty much a minimal fee, a stipend. Well, obviously without them, we could not conduct a good election. And it's important that the votes be counted promptly and they are by our clerk's office. Without enough staff, it could go into the next day and the day after that. People want to know the results of the election as timely as possible. In fact, historically, West Bloomfield has submitted its numbers to the County of Oakland clerk's office by 10:30, I'm not promising that here. I don't work at the clerk's office, but the point is, it's a, it's a system. It's regimented. It's excellent, and people care. Yeah, it's going to be a different election this year, I think. Uh, so maybe instead of election night, we'll see an election week. A anything else that uh, you want the people of West Bloomfield to know about what's going on there in the in the city and the work that you guys are doing? I'd be interested to know too. How how is the budget looking? Well, our budget process, we're required by the end of December to approve a balanced budget, and we've accomplished that every year. This board has actually completed its budget process by early December. We think we're doing well. Our property values run are remaining at the same level as before the pandemic struck, and in fact, property values are even increasing. Homes are being sold at a rate above the list price. So that tells you that the homes are still desired in West Bloomfield. We have not heard officially from the state about state shared revenue that we received. In 2020, the amount we expected to receive is 5.9 million. 
that might be reduced in 2021 by a few hundred thousand dollars up to five hundred thousand dollars we don't know for sure but we're careful how we spend our money and at the end of the year Rhonda, we usually do not ex spend as much as we anticipated so west bloomfield voters and residents do not have to worry about layoffs here or reduction in services we've been conservative in in uh, allocating funds and, and actually uh, the actual expenditure of funds that is so good to know anything else uh, before we let you go here on the megacast no but thank you so much for the good work all of you do at civic center tv no thanks for uh, allowing us to do it and i think this is a great platform being able to share information with the community in a longer style format so they can hear directly from people such as yourself what is going on in their own backyard and so we appreciate the support from all of the communities to allow us to provide this service well thanks Rhonda and when I turn on my car the ignition every morning or every night I have 89.3 FM Lakes FM I love listening to that station well, that's great. And be sure to tune in Friday night as uh, Tyler and Dave hit the airwaves oh, yeah. and they start back with high school football. Oh, wonderful. Well, thanks very much, Rhonda and Tyler.